Hello everyone, I'm John Hayes and I'm delighted to be able to send you this personal mission at Hatfield House. The Salisbury family mansion on the site of the palace where Elizabeth I was a child has rightly been described as one of the treasure houses of England. It stands today as a monument to the skills of Jacobean craftsmen, skills of a sort that we still honour and strive to pass on to new generations. But let us be clear that our task is not born of some bourgeois idealisation of those whom the former Conservative Prime Minister, the third Marquess of Salisbury, whose statue, by the way, stands outside Hatfield, called, quote, the horny-handed sons of toil, unquote. Many crafts involve hard physical work, but the romantic quality of labour, the relationship between labour and imagination drives and inspires me as it does you. Born of a realisation how often the beautification of the world around us results from skill and imagination and labour coming together. This event marks the latest and by no means the least important milestone in our shared efforts to ensure this process of beautification is carried forward into a new age the launch of a new national career service just a few weeks ago came about in part thanks to a realisation that far too many people, especially the young, were being held back in life by not any lack of latent ability, but by the difficulty of obtaining good advice about the options open to them. The craft toolkit that NICE has so ably produced with the help of craftspeople from all over the country, has the potential also to play an important part in filling that gap. I must therefore thank not only NIAS and the Craft and Design magazine for making your event today possible, but also all those in the sector who have taken the trouble to share their experiences of what it takes to master a craft. The status of craft in Britain suffered a long decline that is only now starting to be reversed. It is not that the British people today are any less talented than their forebears, and it's not that careers in craft are unattractive, especially as young people looking to release their talent and creativity. It's merely that we underestimated, undervalued craft as a concept. We forgot about that magical relationship between labour imagination and skill. Now, through the apprenticeship programme in particular, this government is working to show that the path through a university into a career is not the only route to a successful and fulfilled life. As the toolkit shows, there are routes into craft for anyone with the potential to follow them, whatever their age or educational background. By providing easy access to sector-specific advice and guidance, as well as the directories of guilds and training providers, I have no doubt that there's a major part to play in bringing about the renaissance of British craftsmanship, a renaissance that you want to see and that I want to lead with you. This conference is an important milestone in that relationship, in that process, in that mission to build craft, to bring craft to the place it should be, it should always be. This minister will be unrelenting in his passionate desire to place craft at the heart of all we do. Thank you so much for listening to me and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.